All right, everybody, welcome back to GSX 2019, live from Chicago with Chuck Harold, SecurityGuyTV.com, SecurityGuyRadio.com, and ASISTV.org. My next guest, what's your name, sir? Dan Kremers with March Network. Of course you are, one of my old pals. You were one of my first interviews back in the day. Yes. Yeah, yes. going way back. Now, March Network's always progressing, come up with a new stuff. What's the latest, greatest thing? Yeah, so March Network's always focused on certain verticals like banking and retail, and one of the key things there is basically to uncover suspicious activity. So in retail, it's about you know employee theft. In, in banking, it's about fraud for banks. It could be even tellers doing things. So we've had a tool called Searchlight for a number of years, and we've added some capability to it to allow to do customized type searches. And we're searching clients what? Datas, networks specifically? It's really transactions. It's a combination transactions, of transactions point of sales. and video. Point of sale in okay. a retail, and at the banks, it's the teller transactions, and it's the ATM transactions. All right. Right? So in the case of retail, you'll have situations where, believe it or not, um, employees steal a lot from the stores. I don't believe that. Right? So typical scenarios, I could walk up to a cashier, I make a purchase, the cashier waits till I turn around, and they basically hit the void, and then they open up the cash draw right. to steal the money. So there's actually ways you can use our solution to do that. It's really the combination of two transactions. First, a no sale, and then a void. So the no sale basically eliminates the transaction, but you still need to open up the register, and that's where the transaction occurs. So we've created a tool where it doesn't matter if you have 10, 100, 1,000 locations, an investigator can go through and look for this suspicious activity and pick out those two transaction types, and then they can go back and they see the video. It's always about filtering down the data right. and then looking to see what happened, and that's where the video tie-in comes in. So no sale, plus void, plus drawer opens equals possible fraud. Absolutely. That, that's the algorithm kind of, right? Absolutely. And then we go back and look at the video and confirm it, and boom, these guys are nailed. Yeah, I'll tell you another one that's interesting in the retail side, there's a lot of uh, returns for things that we never purchased the first oh, time. Oh yeah, yeah. So we, the way we catch that is basically we'll do a return transaction, but then we use an analytic to determine that there was actually no customer in front of the register. Oh, that's interesting. So the combination of those two things saying, all right, there was a return, maybe a manager returned a $100 uh, leather jacket, but there was no customer in front of the register. Those two data points put together right. and be able to search and filter on that, that allows you to uncover suspicious activity. And, and the same thing applies in the banks. I mean, the banks, you might have other situations where someone is opening up an account, but there's actually no one there opening an account. So maybe Nobody there's- physically there because of the camera verification. Right, well, the, oh. the, te the teller is basically there and he's right. opening up a false account, but there's no customer. But you can do a number of things. That's our new flexibility that we've added with Searchlight. You combine um, transactions with different alarms. You can do sequential transactions. I'll give you another example. Um, in banks, a lot of times they do a, a split deposit. So basically someone could walk in with say a $1,000 fraudulent check. Okay. They'll say deposit $700, but give me the $300 back. Right. So looking at those two transactions, first a split deposit transaction and then a cash back, you can go back and look for those two transaction types together. Now, how quickly? If I say real time, what does that mean? These things usually don't happen real time, right? It's usually after the fact. So if I'm gonna say a bank investigator, retail force, I'm coming in the next day and I'm trying to see what's going on in all my locations. I'm basically, like I said, it could be a thousand locations. So I am, my job is basically find suspicious activity. So the key is to find this activity and do something to prevent it. So maybe it's something related to employee, maybe it's something related to the process I have in the retail store or the bank. It's basically to try to understand overall what's going in operations and locations. But why couldn't we make it real time? I you mean, why you couldn't you say this plus this equals this and here's an alarm. Now th go back and if you're sitting in front of the desk, let's rewind that now. Maybe the transaction is still it going is on. It is possible to do it real time as right. long as we get the transactional data real time to do the analysis. Oh, on. but you have different systems. They may not report so quickly. Co correct. Well, the okay. other thing is some of the banks basically don't do any real time transactions. They'll basically do kind of a, a data dump at night. Oh, that's and then right. And you have to sort yeah, yeah. through the information. Is that why my bank account's always empty? That might be why. That's possible. Because it's not caught up with all well, the I'll deposits. Well, I'll give you another example. We run up a lot of times against is, um, you know, bank tellers actually have a quota for opening new accounts. Right. So here's an interesting trick what they do. They will basically take, let's say, $100 out of your account, open up a new account, and within less than 24 hours, they'll put the $100 back into the original account. This happened at my credit union for years, and I didn't know that's what they were doing. They kept explaining, oh, we forgot to do this, we forgot to do that. Eventually, the credit union was literally closed and they arrested a bunch of people. That's what they were doing. That's exactly. It was always $100. That's exactly what they're doing. So you can now use our system to detect that type of activity. Wow. 
And that would be in less than 24 hours. And the key thing is then you, uh, you uh, identify the employee that's responsible for it. And I don't know how much that caused the bank branch. You said it closed? Well, they, they closed that branch and, and arrested people and fired them. Yeah, right. it was so a big just deal. think about the loss of that bank organization because of that one thing that could have been uncovered with a very simple tool. Right. And, and I knew that was, I knew something was wrong. And when I went in there and talked to them about it, they thought I was the, the crazy old guy. <laughs> No, no, that's not really happening. Your money's not coming back and reappearing and disappearing, but that's what it was doing every month. It's very interesting. very possible now, to do. you always have some good uh, war stories. So you got one for me? Uh, we actually have a pretty interesting uh, case study that we've uh, done recently. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Jay Leno's garage. Well, he, uh, he lived down the street from us in Burbank, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, he used to drive his cars up and so down the street all the time. he now has this um, show on TV. Yeah, right. Okay, and uh, I, I didn't know about it myself until we got involved in it, but apparently he has uh, over 200 cars. Oh, yeah. Right? It's an amazing collection. Yep. So uh, recently, um, he started using Mark Edwards equipment, and the interesting thing is, it's not the security person that he's hired, it's Jay Leno himself is using our solution. He's, he's basically using you know, our mobile app to basically look what's going on location. And you can go online, you can basically see a video of him where he's going through and checking in the cameras. And he, he just loves, he just loves the quality of the video. He loves wow. the real time performance. And um, it, it's great, it's really a, a fun example. Just, you know, a lot of times uh, we focus a lot on banks or retail, but just to show that we can use our system, you know, pretty much for any type of application out there. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, Dan Kramer, it's always nice yeah. to talk to you. Barnstartworks.com. Uh, here's the trick question. What's your booth number? 1319. Dude, you nailed it. Fantastic. All right. Okay. Back in a minute here at SecurityGuyTV.com, ESISTV.org at GSX2019 in Chicago. Whew.